forward as saying they have a battery breakthrough. And, you know, often you hear this stuff, you hear battery breakthrough and you think, is this real? I think this actually is. I've read through their information, what they're talking about, read through the battery technology, and I honestly think Ford are going to be increasing the energy density of their batteries and lowering the cost, which will enable them to provide longer range electric cars, longer range electric pickup trucks, and this will be a pretty big deal for them. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking Ford. I've always been a fan of Ford. I think they're in a bit of trouble, a lot of trouble, but I mean, you know, they're doing pretty well in the United States right now, right? Ford say they're getting close to offering car buyers more affordable, longer range electric vehicles because of a breakthrough in battery technology. So Ford haven't disclosed exact details, energy density. That's what people wanted. I mean, that's what I was looking for. I'm like, what's the, what's the energy density of these new batteries? But they did disclose some information. Charles Poon, Ford's director of electrified propulsion engineering on April 23rd, announced that the Dearborn-based automaker plans by the end of the decade to offer much lower priced EVs that can travel farther on a single charge thanks to its work on new battery cell chemistry. Now, before I talk about the chemistry, I've got to make a point here. I'm not sure if Ford is actually doing this work. I doubt they are. I believe it's their battery partner. I don't believe Ford are actually doing this, you know, work themselves. I think they're financing the work though with SK on. Today marks a pivotal moment in Ford's electrification journey and for the future of electric vehicles, said Poon, after intense research and development at our state-of-the-art battery center in excellence, Ion Park in Romulus. I'm thrilled to share that the Ford team is delivering a game-changing battery chemistry, lithium manganese rich. That's all he said, lithium manganese rich LMR. So this is essentially what some manufacturers, including Tesla, have been working on manganese-doped batteries. This, in theory, might increase energy density by around 20%. Not massive. I don't think it's a game changer Ford are claiming, but it's still a definite improvement. And here's what he said. This isn't just a lab experiment. We're actively working to scale LMR cell chemistry and integrate them into our future vehicle lineup within this decade. Within this decade, I mean, I'm just looking at the clock, guys. It's it's the middle, not even the middle of 2025. So I guess he's got four and a half years to actually follow through on this plan. Anyhow, I mean, it's good news, but it's just, you know, by the end of the decade. Anyhow, Poon said the Ford team is already producing its second generation of LMR cells at its pilot line. Second generation of LMR cells at its pilot line. Now, even though they're producing them on a pilot line, that doesn't really mean they're anywhere near production. So we don't know when production is coming. Could be 2026, could be 2029. But either way, this is still that trajectory, isn't it? Where we're seeing batteries continue to get better constantly, constant innovations, cost decline. He's saying that battery cost is going to come down and energy density is going to go up. Experts have said though that lithium manganese batteries are new. And this is true. The first generation Chevrolet Volt used cells with manganese spinal cathodes, said Sam Abul Samid, Vice President of Market Research at Telemetry Insights. He said spinal refers to a specific type of 3D molecular structure. There are other battery formulations as well, he said, explaining that our next energy, a battery startup based in Novi, is developing manganese cells and the Gemini Hybrid Battery Pack. Gemini as an architecture is designed to double the range of EVs by using two cells, a lithium ion phosphate cell for daily driving and an anode free cell for longer trips. That hybrid battery is actually very revolutionary, which is pr probably more significantly more advanced than these batteries that Ford have revealed. The big advantage of manganese is that it's plentiful, cheap and very stable it doesn't readily experience thermal runaway the way nickel does now the concern is here that some varieties of manganese battery cells don't last as long as nickel-based chemistry cells or as in particular versus lithium ion phosphate and as you can see from china we've seen the new blade batteries from byd there's two different versions lithium ion phosphate uh, geely's gold brick battery and their short blade battery gold lithium ion phosphate, uh, various different batteries coming from CATL, 
uh, with really some of the some of the best technology in the world. Uh, also, CATL revealed their new sodium ion battery, uh, which is clearly game changing. In res- you know, this news from Ford is not really a big deal in comparison to what's happening in China, to be honest with you. But anyway, this will definitely help Ford in the United States. Outside of the United States, Ford wouldn't use these batteries. It just wouldn't make any sense. Ford spokeswoman Emma Berg clarified to the Free Press that while LMR has been researched by many companies, the technology poses challenges with voltage decay and gas generation. What is unique about the Ford LMR development is that the automakers is the automaker is or has directly addressed these issues while not sacrificing energy density. Now, critics have said that manganese cells have had a short charge cycle life, and Ford's comments imply that they may have found a way to fix this short charge cycle life. What they're aiming to do clearly is to have a similar charge cycle life to lithium ion phosphate or NMC cells, but to significantly improve energy density. Another person said this, another critic, Sam Furani said the clarification suggested progress more than a breakthrough. Directly addressing does not sound like they've found a solution, but rather getting better and working hard toward an eventual producible solution, said Firani, Vice President of Global Vehicle Forecasting and Auto Forecast Solutions. In his post, Poon from Ford said Ford's LMR battery technology has the potential to make a step change by giving its EVs enhanced safety and stability comparable to lithium ion phosphate batteries, as well as a higher energy density than even high nickel batteries which provide a longer range on a single charge i personally think that ford working on this i mean i'm clearly wrong wasn't i my, 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 my initial response to this was ford is probably not working on this but it does appear that ford is working on these batteries but i still believe it's in collaboration with sk on their south korean battery partner but my point here is to say this i, I really think the future of batteries is lithium ion phosphate and sodium batteries and I honestly think Ford are wasting time and money in investing into this battery because best case scenario, they're going to sell them in all Fords in the United States, right? That's best case scenario. So that's just not enough. Production is just not high enough to offset the cost of, of, of development, the cost of actually going through this process to only get a 10 or 20% energy density improvement. Really, the better thing to do, in my opinion, bite the bullet, license technology from one of the biggest battery companies in the world P- take your pick they've all got amazing batteries license that build your factory get it done as soon as possible get these batteries into your cars as soon as possible don't talk about what's going to happen theoretically between now and 2030 hopefully just actually do it i think all the talk about these new batteries and solid state batteries it's so exciting and i talk about it on the channel but i actually think the smartest move for these companies particularly car companies is use the real thing get the real thing Build it on mass. You can build it affordably. License it. Pay them a five percent, ten percent licensing fee, whatever it may be. It's still going to be much more affordable, and it's proven technology that works now, today. Guys, do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know what you think.